Well, he spends all of his time on qualifying sets. That's why he's so bad in the race. I'm gonna start the video. It's only 46 the minutes, so it shouldn't be that bad. Let's see this crash one more time. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Dwayne Kuiper here, along with Mike Kruko, on a great night for EA Sports oh, MVP Baseball. Baseball. And now here's tonight's starting pitcher, Bronson Arroyo. Tonight's American League game features the Tampa Bay Devil Rays and the Boston Red Sox. Air steps into the batter's box. This is one of the best hitters in baseball. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Prime Network. For today's broadcast of Arca Hooters Cup Racing, number 18 today, as we're at the Winchester Speedway in Winchester, Who is Indiana. This? Today we'll go 100 racing laps on the high bank half mile. Ray Dunlap along with Ron Dreger bringing you the broadcast Ooh, today. And new guys. I think we need to take a look at today's starting lineup. A lot of really good cars in the field. Starting 31st, Cloverdale, Indiana driver Brandon Fagan. 30th, Andy Gensman from Fremont, Ohio. Scotty Andy Gensman. From Hill, Indiana, I remember him. Time Arca champion Lee Raymond of Dayton, he Ohio, flipped at Daytona in 92. Robert Hamm from Auburn, Alabama will go 27th. Today we see Dave Jensen driving his own car, number that 80, starting 26th. Trip. Perry Tripp in the number 33 car will go 25th. Ron and Dale Hirschfield will start 24th today. The 23rd starter is Kyle Harvey in a car uh, fielded by Bob Dodder. 22nd, Gary Hawes from Taylor, Michigan. Jeff Johnson from Keokuk, Iowa, 21st. And Troy Green from Dublin, Ohio, in the 4 car start for is 20th. 19th starting position oh, goes around to oh, Churchill okay. from Windsor, Ontario. They're Bob Daughter from Chicago, story. Illinois, a many-time ARCA champion starting 18th. Today we see Glenn Brewer driving the number 10 car starting 17th. And Kenny Allen from Chicago, North Carolina, will take his onset car into 16th starting position today. Top 15, the 15th starter Roger Blackstock driving his own Pontiac out of Washington, Michigan. Kurt Dickey from Windsor, Ontario, Washington, Canada Michigan. starts 14th. Jerry Huffman in the Huffman <laughs> Cabinet Company owned by his father Herman Huffman is 13th. And Bob Breback, the 90 Arca Hooters Cup Series champion, is 12th in the car fielded by Shelley Breback, Gucci Joe Slonkowski. Breback from Ashland, Wisconsin, starting 12th today. And in 11th starting position, it's Eric Smith from Bloomington. He'll uh, be driving the Just Racing Ford. Tom Bigelow will take the number 60 Fuel Cat entry, starting 10th. Today, it's Jeep Flume in the ninth starting position. He's from Cincinnati, Ohio. And last year's STP Prestone Arca Rookie of the Year, Frank Kimmel, starting 8th. The 1986 Rookie of the Year in this series, Mark Gibson from Auburn, Georgia, starts 7th in Charlie Newby's Chrysler LeBaron. Bobby Bowser is 6th. He's a defending series champion in the Quality Farm and Fleet Ford. Fifth place starter is rookie Jeremy Mayfield from Nashville, Tennessee, oh in the Sadler Brothers Oldsmobile. And the fourth starter is Bob Keselowski from Rochester Hills, Michigan, Winnebago Galliana's Chrysler. The Black Bandit going fourth. Bob Strait will start in third position today in the Target Expediting Ford. And a great qualifying run by rookie L.W. Miller from Dushore, Pennsylvania. He'll be starting second today on the outside of the first row and on the pole today with a brand new track record of 108 miles an hour. It's Tim Steele in the H&S die car. Tim Steele having an excellent season, Ron Drager, as we get ready to go green flag racing here at Winchester, Indiana. Tell me a little bit about this racetrack, Ron. Winchester is a, a very historic racetrack. It's a very high bank, 33 degree banking half mile. That gets a lot of speed up for a short track. It's one of three tracks built in the 1930s by Frank Funk, also Salem Speedway here in Indiana, and the now defunct Dayton Speedway. These tracks referred to as the hills because of the steep banking and a lot, a lot of uh, great I didn't know Dayton was high bank. That's actually kind of cool. Over the years. I knew that Salem and Winchester were pretty similar. Years here at Winchester and lots of Arca Hooters. Cup racing. The cars are coming out of turn three and four right now as we get ready to go green flag racing. The green flag is unfurled by starter Jim Clark and we're ready to go and Tim Steele takes it down the front straight away. L.W. Miller falling in line there along with Steele. 
Steele jumps out to the lead. You know, Ray, he has not yet won a race in the 1993 season on the short tracks. He's had wins at Pocono and Talladega on the super speedways, yet to have a short track win, and this is a good track for Tim Steele. It's amazing when we look back across his, uh, his background, he really comes from a short track racing background, racing at Berlin Speedway in Michigan and also in the ASA series where he was... Benny Sadler got his first push for win Tim on the same night as this race. Us, Ron, that he can race hard on the short tracks. He got the yep. pole earlier this year at Pensacola and he's had some really good runs, just hasn't made oh, it. Oh, first the rookie to win in a while. He's led nine races of the 18... Oh, David Green won. And now he's led 10, so a very Two strong competitor ago. wherever we run. He's going to run up front. Winchester is a good track for Tim because he won the NASCAR All-Pro Winston Series uh, late model race here, the Winchester 400 last Sun's season. already getting lapped. This is a track that he likes and uh, also Salem Speedway where he's done very well. That's where he got his one and only ASA win at Salem. But right now we're Arca Hooters Cup racing. We're on the high banks and Tim Steele coming off at turn four. And look at that driver right behind him qualifying on the outside row, uh, uh, front row. That's L.W. Miller from Dushore, Pennsylvania in the number 70. A great qualifying run for this rookie. Young man came on the series. Uh, this is a car that was purchased from Bill Venturini. It's Bill Venturini's short track car that he used in the 1992 season. And uh, he also now has a super speedway car. And they're really picking up their effort. They're learning a lot about the series, how the cars handle. And, and you can see that uh, as of this event, he's really come of age starting on the outside pole. We got a look at the number 48 car there, Andy Gensman from Fremont, Ohio, having trouble early on in the race today in the D's LP gas car. Number 48. Oh, driving the car, he's flipped at Daytona. Oh man, that's a lot of traffic. Of today's race. Oh. A couple other cars going slow on the back stretch. Yellow, and you yellow. see right now that I believe the caution is out. Yellow flag is flying here at Winchester in the early stages of today's race, and that's because of uh, Troy Green spin on the back stretch in a number 23 car. So uh, problems with the number 23. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with more Arca Hooters Cup racing right after this. We're back with you. More action from Winchester. I kind of wonder how Arca regional Hooters this Cup racing. Is. The lights are out in the Dodge Intrepid Pace Car. Tim like Steele is our race leader who just recovered one. from a caution for Troy yes. Green's LCI Communications Buick spinning on the back stretch. Ray Dunlap along with Ron Drager. Tim Steele the leader. We see Tim Steele up front early on in the race today, and he's led right from the green flag. We're just getting ready to go back to green flag racing. As Ron said, we had a caution, and L.W. Miller running in second position today. And let's talk a little bit more about the rookie L.W. Miller, Ron. This is a kid who came into the Arca Hooters Cup Tour this year, had not seen any of the racetracks we've run on. That's a difficult thing for a driver with not a lot of experience. A lot of guys come to the Arca Series and have run a lot of different racetracks, Tim Steele being one of those drivers. But LW didn't have a lot of experience when he came to the Series. He does have very good equipment, though. We see the green flag coming back out. We're under racing conditions, and Bob Strait takes the car number 37 underneath L.W. Miller. Just as we get talking to him, that's the target expediting Ford. Don't count Bob Strait out today. He was the winner last race at Salem, Indiana, a track identical to this Winchester Speedway. Bob Strait and Jim Spacuzzi target expediting Ford. That team switching to Fords this year, and they've done very, very well. Just coming together as a driver and a team for the 1993 season. And uh, you see Jeremy Mayfield now putting a little pressure on Bob Strait for third position. I'm hoping Three rookies Jeremy running wins. up front in today's competition. Mm -hmm. Steel out front, L.W. Miller running second. There you see Strait in the target expediting Ford. He's running third, then Mayfield and Bobby Bowser, last year's Arca Hooters Cup champion, putting the quality farm and fleet forward into view. And now he puts the move on the inside of Mayfield. He gets the position as they go into turn three. Bobby Bowser, one of the youth movement drivers in the Arca series, as you see Brandon Fagan's Chevrolet being put a lap down by the leaders of the race. Uh, Bobby Bowser, the Fang Series champion, 26 years old. Tim Steele, current series leader, 25 years old. Jeremy Mayfield, also in the top five, 24 years old. Great young drivers coming up through the Arca Hooters Cup Series this season. And this is the place where these drivers are going to get their experience. You've got to get lap time behind the wheel, and this is the way to do it. You get into Arca Hooters Cup Racing, and you get on these racetracks, and boy, I'll tell you what, one guy that's really done a great job so far this season and continues to lead is Tim Steele in a number 16 car. H&S Tie sponsorship on that, and he's starting to get around some lap traffic. You see Robert Ham's Budweiser Chevrolet going a lap down. Curry Tripp in the car number 33, the Oldsmobile, also going a lap down. And that's number 80, Dave Jensen, who's driving his own car today. Jensen from Grain Valley, Missouri, now going a lap down. And this is only the second race of the 1993 season, actually ever in Arthur Hooters Cup, for Jeff Johnson from Keokuk, Iowa. He just got lapped, as well as Scotty Sands, 
So this car number 16 that Tim Steele's driving really dialed that in as he's getting through traffic in a hurry in the miles. early stages of today's race. There's Randy Churchill from Windsor, Ontario in the Wilds Enterprise and Chevrolet is going to lap down. Steele has really set the pace, but the drivers behind him seem to be just, just filing their way along. They're not concerned at this point that he's getting too far away. They want to see Bobby Bowser continuing to advance. He's now past Mayfield, past Straight, and has a sight set on Miller. Bowser moving up quickly. He's in third position now as he tucks in behind the number 70. Looks to the inside as they go into turn two. Oh. Bobby Bowser three oh. wide in Winchester. Well, that's a tough move to make back there. And you can see L.W. Miller had the advantage on the top side. Bobby Bowser not going to wait around too long. He doesn't want Tim Steele to get away from him. This track is a very rough surface, Ron Drager. It's been a long time since this track has been repaved. Bobby Bowser is a guy that can have a good handle on a racetrack that's very rough, and we see that evident today as he's moving up. Now he's moved up and put his sights on L.W. Miller. It's one of the differences you find up in the northern region of the country as opposed to the south. Many of our viewers watching on Sports South. Up north here in the winters, we have a lot of moisture and freezing. It takes a lot of toll on the paved racetracks. It just tears them up. You get moisture under there, it freezes, raises the asphalt up, and it creates rough spots that have to be patched and filled with sealer. And from season to season, uh, it, it's tough to maintain a paved racetrack in this part of the country. This is a very rough and abrasive surface, but the thing is, all the drivers have the same challenge to be faced. And right now we see Frank Kimmel in the number 02 car, and he's following in right behind Bob Keselowski in the number 29 car, sponsored by Winnebago Industries and Galeano's. That's a Chrysler. We're on a little bit of a difference here between the ARCA Hooters Cup Tour and the Winston Cup Tour, as we do allow Chrysler to compete in ARCA. Uh, Mopar Performance, Larry Henry and the group at Mopar Performance have put a lot of emphasis on the ARCA series in terms of the stock car effort which they're trying to put forth. Bob Keselowski, the standard bearer now, Jerry Churchill had, had also driven Chryslers at the beginning, and uh, you'll see Mark Gibson and Charlie Newby's Atlas Cop Pro Tools Chrysler also in the field today. Chrysler very evident here, uh, Mopar, the official battery of ARCA, so, so a lot of effort putting forth in the ARCA series. Official battery. L.W. Miller continues to run second. Bobby Bowser running in third. What about Die Hard? Robin Fleet Ford. And these cars getting a little bit further away from Tim Steele every lap. Tim it Steele turning off in ice very cream. fast times. We see him come down the front straightaway. L.W. Miller and Bobby Bowser. I think Bowser there's only like two cars on the lead lap at the end of this. Tim Steele setting the pace. You know, Ray, all he had to do really was come here today and, and get a good, solid, consistent, maybe a top five or a top ten finish to set himself up for what would be just an easy finish at Atlanta to lock up the series championship. He's that far ahead. Heavy traffic over in turn two as they go around Dave Jensen. We see Kurt Dickey from wins Winter, this Ontario lock it up. in as Tim Steele goes around him. And some sort of a problem Engine. in the number 12 car. That's Roger Blackstock from Washington, Michigan pulling the car into the pits. We see a little bit of smoke coming from the rear end of Blackstock car. We'll have to get a report from the pits and see exactly what happened there. Right now, Tim Steele moves it up onto the bumper of number three, Kenny Allen from Shelby, North Carolina. You can still moving up on the onset car, and again, getting back to, does he play it conservative? He does not play it conservative. He's running just as hard as he can. Even though he knows a, a good, consistent finish here in Atlanta will lock up the series championship, talked to Tim Steele earlier today. He says there's only one way to drive this racetrack, and that's wide open, flat out, as hard as you can drive it. Tim feels like if he's going to drive conservatively here today, he'll probably get in more trouble than he would if he just went out, as he has every race this year, to lead every lap, win the pole, win the race. He certainly led this race early on today as they go around once again. Kenny Allen's kind of by there. Right up on the bumper of Kenny Allen. Allen also with uh, some experience uh, on the short tracks. He's run uh, the Arca Hooters Cup Tour. This is his second year in a row now. He's uh, full-time on the deal this year for the first time, though. So some of the racetracks we've been to, Kenny Allen's never seen before. Kenny Allen's doing a pretty good job here. He's holding Tim Steele off, staying on the lead lap. Kenny Allen used to field Winston Cup cars. He had a lot of drivers drive for him. Uh, Donnie Allison and Dick Trickle and Charlie Glock's back. Uh, Jimmy Spencer. Uh, Kenny Allen decided, look, if I'm going to field these cars, if I'm going to put the money up, if I'm going to put all, everything together, I'm going to take a turn at the wheel and see how it feels. He tried that last year, about the middle of the season in the Arca Hooters Cup Series. He said, I like this. I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> That's got to be a good feeling to get behind the wheel of a car that you put together, and if you crash it, you got to take it home and fix it. Kenny Allen knows about that. As they yes, go around Scotty Sands from Henryville, Indiana, that's and the number Watson three knows car, all about he that. is doing an excellent job of holding off steel. That's been about eight laps now that he stayed in front of the number 16. It's such Kenny a Allen good owns uh, some feeling. auto glass replacement shops down in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. 
Uh, that's his business. It's Allen's Associated Glass, and that's where he gets his money to go racing. A lot of these guys, as you know, they are not full-time professional racers. Uh, they're self-employed business people who have the effort to uh, go forward. They can get the time off work. They can put the money up to get racing. Some of them just have one short track car. Some of them have as many as three, four cars. Oh. Whoa, there he he heavy oh. traffic over in turn two as they get around number 60. Tom Bigelow. Bigelow in the fuel cat entry, and before the race, they had a little ceremony to honor Tom Bigelow. A lot of uh, history behind this guy, and he's a hometown fellow. Tom Bigelow from Winchester, Indiana. Prior to the race, Roger and Linda Holdem and the promoters here at Winchester Speedway presented him with a key to Winchester Speedway. There have only been six of those given out in the track's history. Tom has always promoted the racetrack as much as he could. He's got a great racing background. He's driven a bunch of Indy 500s. Uh, he's one of the all-time leaders in USAC sprint car victories. He has victories in U USAC midget division, victories in the Arca Hooters Cup midget division. Just a great all-around racer Tom Bigelow is. And today, uh, he re received his just award right here close to home. A lot of fans on hand to watch Tom Bigelow be honored prior whoa, to whoa, 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 whoa. Winchester. Oh, wow. Not just a great racer, but a great guy. And we have a oh. spin over in turn two. That looks like Scotty Sands from Henryville, Indiana. Uh, I wouldn't park the number 43 car. So Scotty Sands getting back back up onto the racetrack right now and that brings out caution number two today at Winchester Speedway. More Arca Hooters Cup racing. We're going to take a short break. We'll pay some bills and take a look at these commercials. We'll be back with more racing right after this. Way for Arca Hooters Cup racing, we see the number three onset entry of Kenny Allen. We just talked about what a great job he's been doing. They're having a problem pushing back into the pit area, and they're going to take a look at the number three car. Some sort of a fire or a pro electrical problem on the number 15 car from Jeep Plume. And Ron, here's a look at your top five. Tim Steele, the leader, L.W. Miller, second, Bobby Bowser, third, Bob Strait, fourth, Jeremy Mayfield, fifth. Tim Steele's kind of had a clear-cut advantage over the rest of the top five most of the day, and here we go, ready to go back to action. The cars come out of turn four, off of the high banks, down in front of the starter. Jim Clark is the official starter for Arca, putting out the green flag. Oh, L.W. Miller was sleeping. Leads this lap, as he's done so far all the way through today's race. He's had that number 16 H&S die entry up front. Good racing all around the speedway. Uh, Tim Steele is, is running such a good pace. Uh, we've seen him put several cars more than one lap down as we're making laps here. That's Glenn Brewer in car number 10. That's the CSR Lewandowski Construction Oldsmobile. Glenn Brewer, the 1990 Hooters Cup Series Rookie of the Year. L.W. Miller makes his way around as does Bob Strait. And now let's see what L.W. Miller can do or Bob Strait in terms of catching Tim Steele. See if Steele is able to pull away even further. Steele really has opened it up a lot. Ron, when we, we just saw Glenn Brewer in the number 10 car. Uh, he got a lap down here early as we're back into green flag racing. He's one of the guys that comes a long distance to all of these races coming from uh, down in Georgia. A lot of these guys put a lot of miles on their transporter just making it to these Arca Hooters Cup races. Yeah, it's really amazing how many miles these teams travel in the course of one season. Glenn Brewer's from Columbus, Georgia. You've got Robert Ham from Auburn, Alabama. These guys are chasing every race in Michigan, Ohio, and Indiana. Uh, some of the speedways are closer to home for those guys, but they're again they're four or five days away from home. So it's really a tough challenge not only to compete at the racetrack, but the rigors that it takes to prepare the car and, and just make every race in terms of getting there, getting in the field, and you know, taking it back home. You drive a lot of miles on the speedway and a lot of miles to get there. Right now we see Tim Steele running into turn one and two. He's leading the race. L.W. Miller running second. He's from Dushore, Pennsylvania, a, a contender for 1993's ARCA Hooters Cup SDP and Prestone Rookie of the Year awards. Uh, Bob Strait in the number 37 is running in third position, and we see Mayfield making a move on Bowser now to move up into fourth position. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Bowser looked so strong earlier, and now we see Mayfield passing him. you got to wonder if there's a problem on the Bowser car or if he just slipped a little bit there going up the track. That's easy to do on this racetrack, to get in traffic and just uh, manhandle the car a little bit, Safe and just one Jeremy little bobble Mayfield can let a couple of drivers get past you. That may be the situation as we see the number five so getting past Bobby Bowser in the number 21. We take a look down the long back straightaway, and Ron, this is a racetrack that you've He's got to have driving a Tommy Allison for, because even car. though the banks are, are a high bank, 33 degrees as we said, similar to like Every a Talladega. Every time he was going to get a cup ride, he almost died. Ways you got to power down. Yeah, it, it's a combination of handling the power, and uh, you got to be right on. This is this is a very, very demanding racetrack, and a lot of concentration is required. 
uh, you hear guys talk about on a super speedway like Talladega, you, you almost get put to sleep because you got your foot down on the accelerator running wide open all the time. The turns are so very sweeping and the straightaways are so long that it, Ooh, you got Bowser in the pits. Ron, I think you were right. Some sort of a major problem on the number 21 quality farm and fleet car. They're going to the right side as they change the tires there. Either a vibration or a tire going down. This is really going to hurt Bowser, who's taking this pit stop under green flag. That's tough. That's really tough. Boy, Jack and Gary and Todd did a good job to get him in and out. Uh, nonetheless, these cars are making laps in the neighborhood of 16 seconds, running wide open under the green. He had to decelerate, come in, stop, and now accelerate. And right there, you see, he's going two laps down. Yeah, yeah went up right. He went one lap down as he was in the pits, and now the leader, Steele, has caught back up and went around him once again. So two laps down for Bobby Bowser. Like right now, uh, Tim Steele moving up on the bumper of uh, Tom Bigelow in the fuel cat entry, number 60. He goes around him handily as he goes into turn one, and now Bowser moving back up, trying to get on the bumper of Steele and maybe get one of those laps back. Yeah, if, I guess if you're trying to look for a bright ray of sunshine through the clouds, you're going to say Bowser now has fresh tires on the right side. Perhaps that's the advantage he needs to gain one of those laps back, but to gain two laps back is going to be really tough. Tim Steele working his way around the field right now. They go around Glenn Brewer once again, and Ooh, Bowser's wow. moved up on Steele. Maybe those work. tires have helped quite a bit. He's right on the bumper of the number 16. Oh. They come out at turn three and four down the front straightaway, and Bowser has the advantage going into turn one. What you're watching here is not only the race on the track for Bowser to get a lap back and try to get back in contention, but the top two drivers in the championship battle for the Arca Hooters Cup. Tim Steele the leader, what? Bowser the what defending Jeremy series champion, and second place point man right now. An incredible race last year in the points championship chase as Bobby Bowser and Bob Keselowski went into the final race at Atlanta. Just a few points between them. Bowser emerged as the champion. An incredible year for the Quality Farm and Fleet team. And they've had a good year this year, Ron. It's just this Tim Steele kid has had an incredible year on his rookie season here in the Arca Hooters Cup Tour. Well, we haven't seen anybody run away with a championship point lead like this for at least four or five seasons. Uh, it's been very competitive. But Tim Steele, has been, he's just been right on it where they go. They haven't had major problems, uh, mechanical failures. They're just they're really looking good right now. Really, Daytona was the only major problem throughout the season for this team, and we're getting an eyeful of Bob Strait in the number 37 target. Was, it wasn't even his fault. As he comes down the front straightaway, there's a car that you cannot count out until the very end of the race. This guy is an excellent driver, and they've had a really good uh, season so far as he's gotten in behind the wheel there after the Daytona race. A great season for Bob Strait and Target Expediter. It gives a lot of credit to Donnie Strait as crew chief. We also saw Frank Kimmel now has moved on L.W. Miller, Kimmel and Terry Shirley's Indiana Steel Grammar Industries car. Bob Strait goes down the back stretch and number 37 Target Expediting Ford trying to move up on Bowser and Steele, the leaders of this race. We see Jeremy Mayfield sticking back in there. Frank Kimmel, as you said, and L.W. Miller, those cars running in the top ten. Here we get a look at Miller coming down the front straightaway. He's got something hanging out of his car. Looks like the exhaust pipe. Oh, there's a bobble. Yeah, that car's loose. Number 70, L.W. Miller with a handful as he goes down the back straightaway, getting around some lap traffic. The car seems to be performing well, but boy, he had a handful that time when he went into turn one and two. L.W. Miller from Dushore, Pennsylvania. His father owns a Chevrolet dealership and the transport company. He's getting loose. He's up high. He's going to loop it, Ray. Going to loop it. Going into turn one and two, L.W. Miller just lost control of that car. And we also see some sort of a problem with the number 77. The yellow flag is out. And that's Mark Gibson going down the back stretch. He's uh, evidently maybe ooh, a wheel bearing. Ooh, ooh, some ooh, sort of a problem. Awesome. A lot of smoke out of the front of that car. Yeah, when Miller got sideways, there was a lot of ramming and ramming going on back behind him. And he was the victim of that. And that's a tough break because because uh, Charlie Newby's Atlas Copco Chrysler was running fifth on lead lap. Tough break for that. L.W. Miller back onto the racetrack. No damage on the number 70, but we are going to have to take a short break. We're under caution for the third time. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Winchester Dang, Speedway. I bet the, the 37 was in second. Mark Gibson into the pit area and getting attention from Maybe Charlie Newby, the owner of that car. And Ron, we see the leaders coming on the pit road right now. Bob Strait going out of view. There. No, it's Bob, Bob Strait. In the number 29, L.W. Miller on pit road as well as Tim Steele. And now we see Jeremy Mayfield. Steele has led every lap Jeremy of this Mayfield's race. Jeremy Mayfield's fourth, I think. So maybe the only way these guys can get the lead from him is to get another pit stop. Uh, the HS Frank Kimmel is second. 
you can see them. Tire were running loose out in the pit road. They've got a hold of that. The other driver's also making their pit stop. Let's see who drops down off the jacks and gets out first. Mayfield had a good start. Ooh, Jeremy right Mayfield side tires on only. Two tires, just left sides only. We see Frank Kimmel or coming out. He also took on two. Right now, Tim Steele and Bob Strait in the pit area getting four fresh tires and some sort oh, of problem pushing on Tim Steele's car. Bob the crew is pushing Steele off. Point we see Bob Strait getting out and uh, yeah, Steele not able to get that car fired. Oh, and oh. now he's off where the crowd was really up and hollering on that. See, Keselowski also made it out. Oh, and Bob Reback right behind Whoa. the tires loose there on pit road. We saw the ARCA official stop the tire before it went on the road. That was a good thing that happened there. Here's a look at L.W. Miller's spin. We see him coming into turn three, or excuse me, turn two, oh. and he just loops the car. The I, I don't think anything happened to the car. He just lost it. Pretty lucky he didn't get in the wall there, actually. Uh, that would have done some damage to it. As we see, he just kind of slid down on the end of the grass, bounced around a little bit, and ready to go again. Doing a good job was Jeremy Mayfield and Kyle Harvey getting uh, right behind uh, L.W. Miller that time. And we're ready to go back to green flag racing. Now the green is out from starter Jim Clark. And right now we have a brand new leader in the race. That's Bob Strait from Mokina, Illinois. Bob Strait. Uh, you saw Bob Strait took on four tires. Some of the other teams only two. Why are they not ahead of him? The other teams took on two, went one lap around, came back in and put the other two tires on. You see, these cars took four tires all in one stop. They're up front. That's Bob Strait, Bob Keselowski, and Tim Steele. Target Expediting is the sponsorship on a number 37. That's a Ford. Running in second position is the Chrysler of Bob Keselowski from Rochester Hills, Michigan. Winnebago sponsorship there. And uh, he's got a mirror full of Tim Steele who's moved up now. There, these front three cars kind of getting away from the pack after we've gone back to green flag. Well, you're not going to rattle Bob Keselowski. He and his car owner brother, Ron, have been around this series for about eight years full time. Prior to that, uh, Ron, in the late 60s, early 70s, was a NASCAR Grand National. That's now the Winston Cup Series. He was a driver on that series. Uh, they're the leading team in, in ARCA in terms of both victories and polls. They've got over 25 wins, 25 victories on this ARCA Leaders Cup Series. So that's a team that's going to be around at the finish of a race unless they have mechanical problems, and they're going to be toward the front. No, well, this year's not a very good year for him. They only have like one top ten, and there's a or one top five, and there's the win at Springfield on the dirt. There, as he went through turn one and two, we take a look as they go down the back stretch, and Tim Steele okay. has moved past Truck Bob Keselowski. We'll He's running in second place. They're coming up right now on Jerry Huffman from Maroa, Illinois. At the last event at Salem, Indiana, Salem Speedway track, as we've said, very similar to this Winchester Speedway, came down to a last lap shootout between Bob Strait, Bob Keselowski. I don't like that there's no advantage to putting on the front stretch anymore here as well. In NASCAR. Oh! Bob Keselowski getting up against a wall there a little bit in the number 29, but it appears that he's still going. So it's always there at the end of the race. A terminal problem for the number 29, but he did brush the wall as they come out of turn four. I guess that's what they call up in the marble. If you were in the uh, bottom row of the fourth turn grandstand, you got an eye for it. Whoa! Stretch. Tim Steele oh. continues to run second, but he's moved right up on the bumper of the number 37 target expediting Ford. That's Bob Strait leading Tim Steele in second, and Keselowski was right there, just as you said, and he's always a threat to win a race on a short track, but up against the wall there, I think that's going to be a problem for the number 29. This is interesting uh, to see how long Bob Strait can hold Steele off or whether Steele is really that interested in, in getting around him right away. And maybe he can't get around him. Maybe Bob Strait is running that well. They continue to lap a lot of cars. There's Robert Ham from Auburn, Alabama going a lap down again in the Budweiser entry. They're moving up on the bumper right now of number 44. That's Randy Churchill, one of two drivers from uh, Canada that's in the field today. Randy Churchill, also a second-generation ARCA driver. His father, Jerry Churchill, a competitor on the series. A lot of second- and third-generation even participants in this ARCA Hooters Cup series. You see the move-over flag going on a lot of these race cars as Jim Clark gives them the flag to tell them, move over, the leaders are coming up on your bumper. And Randy Churchill doing an excellent job there of letting these two faster race cars get by because these two are, are dogging it out as they come off a of turn four right now. Steele continues to hound the number 37 as they move right up on the bumper and more lap traffic coming up as they go through turn one and two. Well, it's interesting you mentioned that. At every driver's meeting prior to the event, ARCA President Bob Loga 
tells the participants, look, if there's a couple of guys going to shoot it out for the win at the end of the race, let's let them do it. Let's get down and out of their way. We're not asking you to pull them and stop racing, but we would like to see you to go and get out of the way. Let's let guys I don't know. Do you want me to tell you These guys are certainly doing that the as they're down the backstretch right now, moving around. Right. Kyle Harvey in a number oh. 08 car and Steele with the advantage as they go through. It's only 150 laps, though. Straight up on the high side. That's going to be the good place to run because you get off of that turn. We're probably have like uh, very well. Go, I think. Straight doing that. He's Maybe up on 40. the high side right now, but Steele sticking his nose on the inside, letting straight know that he's going to go back for the lead. That's why Ray Dunlop never got to do commentary because he never said how many laps are left. I think a little bit trying to scrub by on the inside, but it's important for him. Obviously, at this point, he wants back in front. They left Lee Raymond there in Stan Gall's car. Raymond, a two time champion. There's Brandon Fagan going in that car. Bob Strait still holding them off. He's doing an excellent job. The high side is certainly the place to run here. Like you say, it's hurting Steele's tires. Oh, he bobbles a little bit coming off of turn four, but Steele makes the move coming down the front. There he goes. And he gets the lead and straight. Right back again. Coming Seems like there's no one time arc of champs. Like everyone's previously a two or three time arc of champs. Rear of uh, straight car. Again, I don't think a big mechanical problem. Probably just a brake or a tire smoke. Um, as uh, Steele takes the lead. And he's, he's led almost the whole race. Over in that pit stop there where straight was out in front. Look at this. Heavy traffic as they go off of turn two. They're getting around the number 60 fuel cat entry. Dave Jensen from Grain Valley, Missouri. Moving to the inside once again. All the drivers doing an excellent job of watching their mirror to see what's going on behind him coming up right now on Bob Dodder also a past champion in Arca Hooters Cup. Dale Hirschfield also went a lap down there in the Engine Masters Pontiac. His father, a former competitor on the Arca Series, Dave Hirschfield. And it was interesting, Dave Hirschfield brought Ray Nichols, a great name in the, in the Mopar ranks from the late hey. 60s and early 70s. He ran their racing division. You got smoke on the car. Ahead. There's a smoker going down the back stretch. We see Tim Steele coming out of turn two right now. We can't see uh, in view what car that was or what the problem it's was. It's Breback, Bob Breback in the 34. A little bit of trail of smoke. And can see him slowing. He's a 1990 Hooters Cup Series champion, and he's got a problem. I'm sure they're communicating with his pit right now, letting them know they've got a problem. Uh, he's probably looking at his gauges, trying to see exactly what it is that's going away on him. Uh, Bob Breback is a veteran racer, and I'm sure he, if, if he's got a problem, he's not going to endanger the other car. These guys that are in the lead uh, do a good job of getting around Bob Breback. We take a look back through the field now. Lots of heavy traffic all the way around this half-mile high bank racetrack as the cars continue to get off of turn four, doing a good job. Now Tim Steele back in the lead once again. The number 16 car has stretched it out. A good advantage now over Bob Strait. Strait got Wasn't some heavy Walter traffic there. Spoiler broke and Breback. it helped the cars on the super speedway. And once again, Michael front, Walter? it's Cooperville's Yeah, who was that that, that happened? In the truck series? Next car he has I don't know. Was it in Eric the truck Smith series? Michael Walter? Eric Smith, uh, his father, Cleveland. Because in a Martinsville race in 1993, Phil Parsons lost half a spoiler. And, and they they then he's like, oh, I bet that's a handful. Season. They brought the Ford to some speedway races, running My brother, you can drive anything, track races, except maybe that. Doing a good job. <laughs> he's still on the lead lap. Gonna go lap down. <laughs> in 1992, Eric Smith was voted the most improved driver in the Arca Hooters Cup Tour. So this kid doing a good job, and we've seen him have some good runs in 1993. And just creeping back into view there as we look down the front straightaway was the number 21 what car. What a ton, ton of Bobby Bowser. Have a lot so of Bowser needs. on the move coming back up through. But boy, nobody that's seemed to have thing. anything for number 16. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's for sure. Uh, Bobby's still a lap down, so he's got a lot of ground to make up. Straight is still in the top five there. Yeah, yeah really probably. These are the same drivers we saw doing very well in the last event at Salem. Uh, right now, it's Tim Steele's deal, though. He's, he's really set in sail. We look back at the 1993 season in short track racing, Ron, I really believe this is one of the best seasons we've had in our Cahooters Pep Tour for a long time. Some excellent races throughout the season. We've got another good one going on here at Winchester, Indiana. This Come is the on, first Ray. time we've been back to this racetrack for a couple of years. You know, Tim Steele's got to be looking at all this traffic up ahead of him and thinking, you know, I'm way ahead. What do I do here? As I mentioned previously, I talked to him earlier today. He says, you can't let up here. You just can't drive conservatively. You've got to hang it out, get up high, and run wide open all the time. As soon as you let up and get off of it, someone's going to run right past you. L.W. Miller in danger of going a lap down for the first time today, and he is going to do that as Tim Steele gets past him going into turn two. We see once again Scotty Sands and Kyle Harvey going another lap down. So Steele really with this car on rails as he's way up against the wall in the high backs. 
Scotty Sands' father, Bobby Sands, again, a former ARCA Hooters Cup Series driver. Bobby Sands, the car owner. Ray Benson is the crew chief. He had to back off there, though, Ray. I don't know. I'll tell you about it when this race is over, so I don't have to, like, look at a different page. But uh, this has been one of the best years for relief drivers in the four years that I've watched. Ooh. Oh, Bob Kozlowski and Bob Dodd. over there, and Bob Dodd are in the number eight car. I think Kurt Dickey was involved in that also, so a major spin over in turn yes, one and two, Canadian. and this is certainly going to be a problem for the number 29 well, team, 109 Bob Dodd. Well, I'm damage still. we saw earlier in the race run where he got up against the wall. Here's a replay of that, and that may have been the problem with that number 29 car. Maybe a handling problem of some sort, Kozlowski going up against the wall, and now in a major accident over in turn one and two, smoke coming off of Dodder's car. We're going to take another break. Don't go away. Here's the pitch. Hit towards second base. Welcome back to Winchester, Indiana. Ray Dunlap along with Ron Drager bringing you the Winchester ARCA 150. While we were in break, Bob Keselowski's number 29 Winnebago Chrysler came to the attention of Ron, his brother, and crew chief. Now we're ready to go back to green flag racing, and Bob Strait brings it off of turn four. Bobby Bowser on the inside trying Ooh. to get that lap back. Still must have put it. Very significant because if Bobby Bowser can pass the leader of the race, Bob Strait, he will, and now he is, on the lead lap. Bob Strait, the black 37 car, is your race leader. Bobby Bowser in car 21 is now on the same lap. However, if Strait gets back around him, or someone passes Strait for the race lead and gets around Bowser, it'll be a lap down. We see Frank Kimmel from Jeffersonville, Indiana, bringing his uh, 02 Indiana Steel-sponsored car up into the racing. Uh, the first time we've seen him in frame today, doing a good job right on the bumper of Bob Strait, and Steele now is tucked into third position with Bowser out in front. He is on the tail end of the lead lap. Your race leader is number 37. I think Tim Steele is driving a uh, Oldsmobile. Bob Strait, Frank Kimmel, and Tim Steele. And Jeremy Mayfield Those super well speedways has been on the Ford. Bobby Bowser and watching him pull away, and they're going to think, hey, if this guy gets back Squeeze. around and catches up to the back of us, we've got problems. We'd like to put him another lap down. Let's go up there and pass him. That's Jeremy Mayfield Absolutely. right behind Jeremy them all. Mayfield right up on the bumper of uh, Frank Kimmel. That's the 02 car there. And now Steele has moved around Kimmel. He's in second position as he's up on uh, Bob Strait's uh, tail there in the number 37. The black car is the target expediting Ford. The uh, red car is Tim Steele. And right now he's making a move on Bob Strait going down the back stretch. Tim Steele has decided he just doesn't want anybody to lead this race except him. As the cars come off at of turn four, we'll see who the leader will be this lap. Will it be Bob Strait or Tim Steele? It's Bob Strait, and we see the smoke continuing to come out of the number 34 car. That's Bob Brevac from Ashland, Wisconsin, having a problem in his car. Right now, Bowser continues to stay on the tail end of the lead lap. Strait's your leader, but Tim Steele challenging. Once again, every lap we come around, we have to see who the leader's going to be. Really important to watch now whether these guys can put Bowser a lap down again. Steele, more concerned right now with passing Bob straight for the race lead. And nice pass just, just outside of Lee Raymond there in the car number six. He's doing an excellent job. Bowser down to the inside as they split. Number 40, Jeff Johnson coming down the front stretch. And Bowser just gets in front of the number 95 of Gary Haas. That car is really uh, Look at all this traffic. Look at this traffic. Awesome back oh, oh. Bob Strait got pinned in oh. behind there. And Steele made it through. That's backed up Frank Kimmel and Jeremy Mayfield. These guys are racing tooth and nail. Cars going every direction on the backstretch. Bowser continues to stay ahead of Tim Steele, but now Steele has stretched it out. Oh, Bob uh, Strait and Frank Kimmel had to get on the binders there with that heavy traffic going down the backstretch. And we'll have to see here whether Steele can get back around Bowser and pass him to put him a lap down once again. Why so much traffic this late in the race? We started 31 cars. 23 of them are still out there running on the racetrack. Bobby Bowser and the Quality Farm and Fleet Ford goes down the back straightaway. It's a half-mile racetrack, Ron Drager, but uh, it's hard for the viewers to see on uh, the TV right here exactly how high banked it is. It, it's very hard for you to stand at the bottom of the racetrack and run up the banking of this track. 33 degrees, a very, very steep racetrack. Bob Dodder in the to go. Davis. Bob Davis, his partner racing Chevrolet there, going lap down. Tim Steele, your race leader, Bobby Bowser, trying to stay on the lead lap. Uh, he did unlap himself. And there's your other top five cars, Bob Strait, Frank Kimmel, Jeremy Mayfield. And I'll tell you, when Tim Steele got away, when these guys had to pause back there in traffic, they've not been able to make that margin up. 
makes a big difference when you have to get on the brakes for just a little bit of time. Tim Steele going down the front straightaway, passing the number 60 of Tom Bigelow from right here in Winchester, Indiana. We see Tim Steele going down the back straightaway. Those cars are moving up a little bit, the two, three, and four cars, but they're not, not doing it uh, quick enough. Tim Steele feels comfortable. He's led most of the race. Uh, he's going to obviously lead the most laps today. There's a bonus for that. He's led a lap. There's a points bonus for that. We're talking about the Art of Hooters Cup points chase now. He's the full qualifier. Oh, oh he may be a lot of shape. The car loose as he come off a of turn two back there in the number five car. This is a rookie uh, driver. He's from Nashville, Sadler Tennessee. Brothers, uh, driving the Sadler, Sadler Brothers entry. They've got sponsorship from Shoney's in and Texaco on that car. And uh, Mayfield getting a little bit out of shape. And now a race for second position as Frank Kimmel has moved right up on the inside of Bob Strait. To Frank Kimmel in the closing stages of the race at Salem came brother. on like gangbusters. Yeah. He did the same thing at Toledo Speedway. That's why they have the brothers in Frank the Kimmel is a very patient driver for being just the defending rookie of the year. Oh, and I see the lights in the pace car on. We have a yellow. Yes, we do have a yellow. Jim Clark is waving the flag and we see Perry Tripp and the Sergeant Construction number 33 car has looped it over in turn four. He spun the car, but he's back underway. So Perry Tripp bringing out a caution and we're going to take one more break. Don't go away. Some great racing from Winchester. Welcome back to the Winchester Speedway. Some great Arca Hooters Cup short track racing going on and we're on the high bank half mile in uh, central Indiana. Ron Drager and Ray Dunlap bringing the Arca Hooters Cup racing today. We see L.W. Miller is on the inside in the number 70. We've got a restart. Kind of slow Jim that. Steele breaks away from the field as the green flag is back out. We're under racing conditions once again. Boy, did he get a jump. He really left Jeremy Mayfield just kind of sitting there. I don't know if he missed a shift or Steele was just that quick on the restart. That was a very significant caution that we just encountered for a couple of reasons. Number one, the race leader, Tim Steele, did not come in for tires. He's on the Hoosier tire today. He did not come in and reshoot. The rest of the top five did. All came in and took tires, and that's Jeremy Mayfield, Bob Strait, Bobby Bowser, and Frank Kimmel. And when we mentioned Bobby Bowser, we need to let oh, you know. Oh, I forgot Bobby Bowser got back in the lead was hoping, hoping, hoping for a caution so that he could come all the way around and catch up with him. Well, there he is. And now he's on the lead lap running in fourth position. Bowser back in the lead lap. We see Jeremy Mayfield in the number five car going down the back straightaway as well as the number 37 of Bob Strait. Bowser running in fourth position and Frank Kimmel. So some excellent cars up front. We've seen this come down to the wire a number of times this year, Ron Dreger, where Frank Kimmel's right up there along with Bowser Strait. Usually Keselowski is up here in the running for this uh, race, but we saw him get into the wall earlier and also have that other accident. So the 29 is out of contention, but the 21 and the 37, the 5 and the 02 are all fighting it out for second position. None of these top oh, five I thought drivers he was have ever won in Arca Hooters Cup race here at Winchester. Keselowski had, he's no longer in the hunt. So any of these guys that win, and you got a nice frame right here looking at a lot of those guys dicing for those top five positions. Any of them that win, it'll be their first win here at Winchester. The new tires on Bowser's Ford certainly have helped. We see him stretching it out away from Jeremy Mayfield just a bit. Kimmel and uh, Strait continue to dice back there in fifth position. Tim Steele has stretched out his advantage to about seven car lengths now, but Bowser coming on strong as Steele comes down the front straightaway. A very fast AJ race Allman car. AJ just had a flat tire in the Bush race. Earlier in the race, Tracker Bobby Bowser got a couple of laps Bristol. down with that green flag pit stop. And I'll tell you what, I really well, can't I okay. figured no way he's going to make it. 16 for Collard. Track like this, third car. Now running in second spot. Yeah, Ross Chastain wrecked on lap flag seven to go or something to and took out Michael and that and Austin Sindrick. We haven't seen him in frame a lot, but here's a car, uh, a race I should say, that we've seen in frame quite often today. That's Frank Kimmel moving up on the inside of Jeremy Mayfield. Kimmel and Mayfield, uh, again, two of the young up-and-coming drivers. Kimmel driving, whoop, we got a car up high Whoa. in the fence. That's number so 36, car. Jerry Huffman, who uh, continues to motor on. Uh, Randy Churchill from Windsor, Ontario, Ooh. takes the low side, right there. and Huffman was up on the high side, That's but the leaders made it past him, and Huffman's okay. He continues to race. Steele, the leader, uh, I talked previously, he's won the pole, led the most laps, led the race, all those are bonus points. He's sitting in a real good point position, so he's just running for the race win at this point. Tim Steele on fire as he continues to lead almost all of the laps today here at Winchester, but Bobby Bowser makes a contending move as he moves up. White the, flag. The white flag oh, is out. We're under the last lap of the race today. Tim Steele, the leader right now. Bobby Bowser moving up. We'll see when they come off the turn if Bowser has anything for number 16, Tim Steele. 
He's going to have to do it off turn four if he does it. There's traffic up ahead. Tim Steele slides high to the outside. There's Eric Smith on the inside. The and Bobby Bowser finishes second today behind Tim Steele. An excellent race for the victory today. Tim Steele winning his first Arca Hooters Cup race on the short tracks in 1993. A three-time winner so far this season. We see the checkered flag continue to fly for Tim Steele from Coopersville, Michigan. A rookie in Arca Hooters Cup racing. An excellent run today, Ron Drager. We look at the rest of the field coming underneath the checkered flag and Tim Steele takes a Polish victory lap in the number 16. His first short track win of the year, he's won at Pocono, won at Talladega, now a winner here on the high banks at Winchester, Indiana. He's the point leader. He will have a commanding point lead going into the series finale at Atlanta. A really big day for the 25-year-old Michigan driver. At the beginning of the season, we felt that Tim Steele would win a lot of races on the short tracks, and he hadn't done that. Today was the very last short track race of 1993, and he finally goes to victory lane. Look at this as they come off a of turn four. Eric Smith's number nine is sort of in Bowser's way. I don't know if Bowser had enough to get him. Uh, maybe another couple of laps, but that was the final one as Tim Steele beats Bobby Bowser to the line by less than half a car length. A fantastic Arca Hooters Cup race today. Tim Steele getting out of the car, and when we come back from break, we'll meet the winner, Tim Steele, right after this. Well, Tim Steele, your forte has certainly been short tracks in the past, but you come into the Arca Hooters Cup Series this year and you win two super speedways. Now you're back on the short tracks. Yeah, thanks. Um, these short tracks have been, they've been tough. I wonder if he knows that you're supposed to hold the microphone in your own mouth when you ask the question. just kept plugging away. I wanted to win one. This is my last chance to do it. And we just we came here to to lead every lap and win the race and we almost did everything we could do. You did a real good job towards the end, you stayed out with He's the tires on, best. everybody Just else came in and did it. They weren't able to get up to you. What, what do you think happened? I was um, a little concerned though we might have made a big, big mistake and ended up costing the race. But but my HS die crew, they just, you know, they said, let's stay out, let's go for it. And we came out the winner, you know. It was, I was really concerned though, especially when we started coming up on those laps cars and turn one there I about got myself into a bunch of trouble and you know it was just it was a heck of a race play. Yeah a whole mirror full of Bobby Bowser. Yeah a whole mirror. <laughs> I was at uh, towards the end I just slipped the mirror up I didn't want to see what was back there because I just <laughs> right on my back door you know you start looking in the mirror and you end up making mistakes so I just flipped the mirror up and I didn't wasn't concerned. Tim Steele goes to victory lane for the first time on a short track in 1993. And we take a wow, look he's got a huge point lead. Where's Jeremy Mayfield? I thought he did better this season. Bob Kozlowski and Frank Kimmel fourth in the point right now. Steele with a commanding lead. Wow, he ran every race. race he just didn't do that good. Well, it's been a great race here at uh, Winchester. Here's a look at your top ten, Ron Dreger. Gary Hawes, tenth. Glenn Brewer, ninth. Kurt Dickey, the Canadian, eighth. Eric Smith, seventh. L.W. Miller, nice recovery for sixth. Bob Strait, fifth. Frank Kimmel, Jeremy Mayfield. Field. Second, Bobby Bowser, and your winner, Tim Steele. A couple of young drivers up in the top five there. Frank Kimmel, last year's Rookie of the Year. Mayfield, a rookie this year, as well as Tim Steele, who went to victory lane today. We're out of time. We certainly had a great race. Thank you for joining us here on the Prime Network. I'm Ray Dunlap, along with Ron Dreger, and we see Tim Steele getting out of the car once again. He went to victory lane for the third time in 1993. It's been a great one. Thanks for joining us on Prime. We'll see you next time at the races. Thank you for watching and listening with me. You're welcome, sir. That was some good Winchester action. Did you win your game? I did. 8-4 to four against the Tampa Ooh. Bay Devil Rays. Is the inspiration from Tim Steele? The inspiration that... was from Manny Ramirez and Mike Lowell. Wow. The AL East is really bad this year. Yes. No further comment. <laughs>